Next, though, Girls Out Loud is an award-winning mentoring programme for teen girls, and it's just launched in Liverpool. The aim of the programme is to raise the aspirations of teenage girls and empower girls to find their voice. Girls Out Loud was uh, founded by entrepreneur, campaigner and female champion Jane Kenyon in 2009 with a pledge to empower and inspire teenage girls. Thrilled to say that Jane is giving us some time this afternoon to tell us all about it. Afternoon, Jane. Hi, how are you? I'm very well made up that you, you've come on to uh, tell us a bit more. Uh, let's go back. How did it all begin then for Girls Out Loud? So uh, 14 years ago it began, which feels like a, an eternity. So um, anyway, so 14 years ago, I obviously am an entrepreneur and I was running a business working exclusively with women. So I'm a coach and a therapist as well as being an entrepreneur. And I was coaching women, running personal development weekends for women, um, doing peer mentoring for women. And it was kind of my work with women that made me think, do you know what, we probably need to start working on women's confidence and self-belief and resilience and you know the right to be authentic and all those things earlier uh, rather than at 35 45 55 when women are telling me they don't feel confident they've got the imposter syndrome so on and so forth so i started talking about this issue i started researching it i started going into schools as a speaker um doing assemblies and group mentoring and didn't really like what I was seeing and then i started coaching girls who were daughters of women that i'd coached and i wasn't happy with what i'd seen and then i finally got the chance to run a pilot program in a school in Blackpool. I did that for six months and at the end of that program um, I decided I would dedicate the rest of my life to teenage girls because of what I'd seen and, and what happened and so the following year I set up Girls Out Loud and here we are. Okay. Um, and Jane, we don't just mention yeah. programs. We Go on, well, carry on. I was going to say, we don't just run mentoring programs. We also run serious intervention programs for vulnerable girls uh, and workshops and a whole range of things in schools. It's a big ask, Jane, but I think I just wish I'm going to say right now, I wish I had something like this when I was younger. What about the young Jane? What would you have said to that young person having this as an opportunity now to empower girls to have that voice? Yeah, it's a great, it's a great question. I mean, when I was 13, 14, I was struggling. I was struggling. I was in a very dysfunctional family. I had nobody to talk to, nobody to turn to. I ended up leaving home at 16. Um, and, you know, when I think back, and maybe some of my journey may have been a little easier if I'd had a role model, a big sister, somebody that I could have invested some time with uh, who wouldn't judge me who would just listen to me be there for me just be that gentle guide that kind of cool aunt person I call them you know we all need a cool aunt don't we somebody that we can talk to without any uh, sort of fear of disappointing them or any fear of retribution or any fear of getting in trouble um, you know so I think that would have made quite a difference to me however that wasn't why I did it you know, I can think about that now, but that wasn't why I stepped up to do this. I stepped up to do it because I believe that um, we are letting young girls down a lot of the time. And the, the kind of um, landscape they're, they're attempting to navigate is pretty brutal. And we talk about Facebook being 20 years old. You know, in the past 14 years, I've seen some massive, massive changes in the pressures that these teenage girls are attempting to navigate. I agree, Jane. You're spot on there about that kind of looking back when you were 13. I think now that the pressures and the challenges on young girls are so much more of a challenge in life with stuff that they didn't have in my day when I was a teenager. But I want to just ask about how has the landscape changed for you with, with this organisation for the past 13 years? What's that been like? Yeah, so we've seen it get progressively worse. I mean, we talk about raising aspirations, but in reality, that's the very last bit of our job. Because if you've got no self-belief, no self-worth, um, you know, you're focused on all the wrong things. You're stressing out about even going to school because you don't feel safe. Um, you know, you're dealing with this 24-7 um, addiction that you're carrying around with you. Your, you know, fear of being kind of like followed when you leave school. Um, you know, we've got boys' behaviour getting worse and worse in school because of their growth of, of misogyny. Um, so all of these things have just ramped up. So 
And when I first started Girls Out Loud, yes, we were dealing with some social media, but it was at the very beginning. Yes, we were dealing with some of these issues around boys. Well, we're always going to have that. Yes, but nowhere near what we've got today. So I've seen it get progressively worse. So most of our work now is about helping those girls, educating them on being safe, educating them on looking after themselves and each other, educating them and empowering them to make the right decisions, the right choices, um, and to believe in themselves and to believe that they deserve to make those choices. And until we do that, this whole concept of them having an aspiration is a bit of a wish. They haven't got the time for it. They're not focused on it in any way, shape or form. So our work is much more pre-aspiration now than it was when we started. And I wanted to say as well, it's it's that kind of the layers of pressure that uh, for, for young people, especially for, for young girls as well. Can you give us some examples of how uh, you help young girls with Girls Out Loud? Yeah. So we work with two very specific niches of girls, young girls between the age of 12 and 14. And we work with girls that are at the extreme of the cohort. So these are the girls that are incredibly vulnerable, trouble, disengaged, maybe coming from very chaotic families, um, no role models in their home or their or their community, um, you know, struggle to even get into school, possibly be young carers, got very little parenting going on, um, staying up way too late, so fall asleep in school. Um, are angry all the time um, because they're in pain and they don't know how to express it. So we work with those girls. Um, and then the other girls we work with are the girls that sit in the middle. Now, these are the girls that we talk about mentoring and our big sister program. So if you go into any classroom in any school in Liverpool, you'll find that the girls at that age fall into three categories. There are about 10 to 15 percent of them that are considered to be gifted and talented. So they sit at the top of the tree. They're fully engaged. The teachers love them. They're hands up in class. They have found their voice. They're, they love education. They're really focused. They do all right. Um, they get lots of investment and lots of attention. At the other end of that cohort, these girls that I'm talking about that are in serious trouble. Um, and again, in lots of schools, they make up anything between 18 and 60 percent of the cohort, depending on the area that they're in um, and, you know, the kind of levels of deprivation. So the rest of the girls sit in the middle because all the teacher time, all the investment, all the intervention goes to the extremes. So we then work with those middle girls because there's so much talent in the middle and there's also so many mental health issues in the middle because those girls know that they're middle and they just cruise and they look for validation because they know they're not getting this attention for being one of the other two sets. And so they look for validation in all the wrong places. That'll be with boys, that'll be on social media, that'll be uh, with other girls. So their relationships tend to be a bit toxic because they're all competing for space. Um, and because of all of that, they underachieve and they underperform. And so our big sister program that we talked about is a role model mentoring program. And that takes women from all walks of life, all different professions, all different ages. We train them to be mentors and then we connect them to a girl in school and we work together with that girl for 12 months. And that's the program we brought into Liverpool. That's the one we are launching at St. Julia's in Walton, um, the first school in Liverpool to do that program. Such a great idea, Julie. So I want to ask, oh, Jane, even sorry, I want to ask, because you said the school, sorry. I just wanted to ask about the future plans plus the feedback. You must get some amazing stories of transformations, of confidence, of real kind of, you know, turning stories and situations around through the work that you're doing. Yeah, all the time, all the time. I mean, it's hard because we have to raise all our own money to do this work because the schools haven't got a budget. And so there you have to see those results to keep sticking in that in that situation because you're working full on to get local businesses and you know local organizations to support your work. So you've got to be seeing those results. You've got to be confident that it's working. And it absolutely is. Um, you know, this I could talk, I could talk all afternoon about the stories of girls that were painfully shy and are now presenting at assemblies, or the girls that were just about to go off the rails and have re connected and have become a role model to another girl um, or girls that, um, you know, were about to be permanently excluded and are now doing really well or have gone on to be teachers uh, themselves. So, I mean, lots and lots of stories from the girls' point of view. But the other thing that's really interesting, Helen, is the stories from the women. 
So, you know, when you mentor a 12 to 14 year old, 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 well, to help her find her voice, to help her put a hand up more, ask more, be more visible, uh, be more present, you know, find her confidence and her resilience. Guess what happens to you? So, you know, you can't be what you're not. We can't sort of teach what you're not doing. So you and you definitely can't do that with teenagers because they'll see straight through you. So lots of stories from women as well that have stepped up to be big sisters and have got promoted two or three times in a year or have moved jobs or set up businesses or changed their friendship groups and so on and so forth. So, it, it you know, the big sister program is a real win win. And it's our flagship program. And it's the one that, you know, we do most of, um, um, you know, we generate most funding for because it engages the local community you know it engages the women uh, in the local community to step up and say you know what i didn't have this when i was this age i really want to do this um, jane I'm sorry i've got to stop you there because we've run out of time unfortunately okay, but i want to no ask worries. Um, I, yeah. You were right when you said you could talk all afternoon because I'd love you to talk all afternoon, but we've got to head to other <laughs> stories. I love you. Listen, um, can I just give you a little idea for, for the older lady? Why don't you do ladies out loud as well for those post Oh, well, that's where I came from, Helen. So that's what I came from. So I, the, the organisation I was running was called Well Heal Divas. And that's exactly what brought me to on this journey because I have this amazing network of women that have been on the similar process um, and are now stepping forward to pay it forward. So Wonderful. that's exactly where I came from. Yes. Hand in glove. It's perfect. Listen, give us information of how we can find out more, Jane, about Girls Out Loud. Absolutely. Give us some contact Absolutely. details, please. So you need, all you need to do is go to the website, girlsoutloud.org.uk. Um, you can look at all sorts of stuff we're doing and you can then sort of put your name forward to be a volunteer. Um, send that through to us and we'll pick it up. Jane, fantastic. So thrilled to get you on the show this afternoon. Have a fabulous Friday and I'm loving Thank the you. girls out loud. You're making such a difference and I'm so thrilled. Cheers, honey. Thank you so much. Bye.